enabled. CNBC TV 18 Money Control, New Horizon 2.0, presented by GE Healthcare. Hello and welcome to GE Presents New Horizon 2.0 in association with Money Control. I'm your host, Paramita Chatterjee. Health tech enabling precision healthcare. And precision healthcare is the need of the hour with non-communicable diseases accounting for 60% of deaths. And this outcome can be vastly improved if we use uh, newer technologies such as precision healthcare and AI solutions which truly have the ability to transform patient care pathway. And the pandemic, as we saw, accelerated the use of technology in the form of teleconsultations, remote monitoring to unprecedented levels. It's now time to move forward with improved connectivity and streamlined healthcare networks. The Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission is a step in that direction, which will allow faster access to information and more accurate predictive modeling. Furthermore, the introduction of 5G enables greater connectivity across healthcare ecosystems. So in this discussion, we'll be probing the mind of industry leaders to learn how technology can help India's healthcare ecosystem towards precision healthcare. And to discuss that, we have with us on the show today, Girish Raghavan, Vice President Engineering at GE Healthcare. Dr. Aresh Sharma, CEO, National Health Authority. Dr. H.S. Chabra, Indian Spinal Injury Center. Dr. H. Sudarshan Balal, Chairman, Medical Advisory Board, Manipal Hospitals Group. Professor Dr. Rajib Dasgupta, Chairperson, CSMCH, JNU, and Managing Editor, Indian Journal of Public Health. Dr. K. Hari Prasad, President of Hospitals Division at Apollo Hospitals. Thank you so much, all of you, for taking the time out and to discuss really uh, the topic of the hour, which is how do we improve India's healthcare system, particularly with the use of uh, medical technology and the new devices and the precision care which is available. Dr. Sharma, uh, le let me start with you. And as the CEO of the National Health Authority, which was an umbrella body which has been created by the government to really oversee all the initiatives which are there, you know, uh, take us through really how uh, a body such as yours and what are the initiatives that you've been undertaken by the government to really ensure that India is right at the cusp of using the right medical technology in order to make healthcare accessible, affordable and available uh, to our very large population. I think uh, what we at the National Health Authority are doing, we are implementing a project called Aishman Bharat Digital Mission. Uh, the basic idea of this project is to ensure high adoption and leveraging of technology to deliver health services in an affordable, uh, ubiquitous and you know, quality manner. So essential idea is that how do we uh, you know, create a framework wherein we can use all applications. We don't want everybody to use the same application. But we certainly want everybody to integrate that application so that they can talk to each other. So what we are doing in the ABDM is creating a framework. We have a number of building blocks which actually enable the creation of a digital health infrastructure in the country. So this is essentially a framework which actually seeks to integrate through a common protocol all kinds of diverse applications so that we are able to create an over, you know, a scalable, interoperable, frugal, and and you know, for a population of 1.3 billion, so that inclusive architecture for the digital health system of the country. And indeed, uh, that goal is very uh, is much required, as you, as you said, sir. And, and let me go across to Nish. You know, hearing these initiatives and really this mission to integrate, provide a common framework, and all the steps that are being taken by the central government. Um, how does it align with really the paradoxes that we see in the Indian healthcare system where we have the latest technology available in urban areas, but yet the basic facilities are not available just a few kilometers outside of our urban cities? If you look at the paradox, what you're referring to, we have on one end, you know, uh, tier one cities, right? We have the best of the best medical uh, equipments and you know, technologies and physicians and clinicians. And then you go to a tier three city, we are seeing there's a huge want of proper healthcare. 
and this is precisely where uh, uh, Parmita, we are expecting digital to play a huge role, right? Uh, mm. With the, the government rolling out the 5G uh, infrastructure today, we expect the 5G infrastructure to significantly reduce the gap we are seeing today between these two worlds in the healthcare ecosystem. So that is definitely one. The second yeah. thing is the whole concept of uh, healthcare uh, expertise, what we have today, right? So for example, today, what happens is if we have, uh, have a technician or a technologist sitting in a tier one city, and you want to operate a medical equipment sitting in a tier three city, it's impossible today. So using all the digital technologies we have, which is going to be about uh, virtual uh, virtual care, no, uh, video calls, what we have, right? Uh, even uh, no, the, if you look at some of the technologies we have for remote patient monitoring. So today it's possible that a patient would be in a tier three city. He goes back after a large procedure. He goes to his hometown. And through uh, remote patient monitoring, a, a doctor sitting in a tier one hospital can monitor the patient constantly and can give advices and so on and so forth. So in the entire thing, if you ask me what is going to bridge the gap between the two worlds we have, one is infrastructure. And second is the digital technology which is going to help us to reduce the gap uh, significantly. Bring in Dr. Balal here uh, since uh, he's helming uh, the Manipal group of hospitals, which is perhaps one of the largest uh, healthcare networks that we have in the country uh, today. Um, and, you know, physician access, uh, a point raised by Girish, is clearly a big issue. But at the same time, the government is trying to enable a technology framework. How do you see it from a hospital end in terms of physician access? I mean, India has dismal numbers. I think one physician per thousand population, or it could be even, even more adverse. Um, how is technology going to be a game changer? How have you been using it at the group? I would like to go back to the COVID pandemic for a minute, if you allow me. Though the unprecedented, devastating, once-in-a-lifetime COVID pandemic completely uprooted us, turned our world upside down, there were some silver linings in the cloud, in addition to making uh, epidemiology, public health, vaccinations, preventive medicine an important part of our healthcare. It did give a huge impetus to digital technology, teleconsultations, artificial intelligence, remote monitoring, e-pharmacy, uh, e-labs, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, and also made the home care possible, outpatient care possible, and freed a lot of valuable, precious hospital beds for the really, really sick. And it also helped us give special care to the elderly. Okay, I, I think Dr. Chabra wants to um, uh, come in at this point in time from Indian Spinal Injury Center, which is a well-known hospital in, in in the capital city. Go ahead, Dr. Chabra. Yeah, uh, I think. Uh, there's a great promise now in improvement in healthcare, both availability, accessibility, affordability, with telemedicine as we have been discussing about. Uh, telemedicine is not something new. In fact, it has been there since a long time. But with the COVID, this gained a lot of increased uh, use per se uh, across the country also. But there are various things we need to uh, work upon in order to tap the potential to the maximum. Of course, we now have also the telemedicine guidelines. But if we were to go as per the guidelines, the first visit can't be through a teleconsultation. There are restrictions in the medications that you are that you can prescribe. So there are a number of other issues also which need to be looked into. But one of the main limitations which are there in telemedicine is the ability to examine in person, right? So if unless you examine a person, you can't just manage a person based on the history. But that too can be bypassed if we set up, like in Queensland, we set up uh, various satellite clinics where there is a doctor who is not specialized but can be in touch with the specialist in a central area uh, Dr. Hyprasad of Apollo Hospitals, which is again one of the largest groups uh, in the country. I mean, how do you respond and really react, whether it is from startups who are competing with perhaps some of the facilities like that hospitals such as yours are offering or even some of the technology enablers? Uh, what have you seen in terms of the incremental benefits? COVID has created a huge boom in technology and uh, COVID has I mean, opened up multiple spaces and telemedicine, as everybody was speaking about, teleconsultation has become just one aspect of telemedicine today. I remember during the COVID days, it taught us to innovate, it taught us to do new things, it taught, it taught us to think out of the box to create solutions. There was a hospital in uh, far in, in the Northeast and uh, 
they had no doctors there somebody had donated some equipment for uh, a covid management there but there was no doctor there to manage they had only a couple of nurses but there were a lot of sick patients there so what we did is we quickly set up a, a system there uh, and we, we created a tele icu and uh, we actually started monitoring sick patients from there and helping the local nurses to treat the patients and the outcomes were comparable so tele icu tele pathology tele radiology so multiple new things have come into uh, the field and they are here to stay and today eicu which started off as a uh, need during the covid situation has become a Uh, one of the regular offerings of many of the large hospitals right uh, we take your point let me come to dr rajib das gupta because uh, dr uh, professor das gupta you've been patiently listening to everyone's point of view and of course we all know india is always a land of paradoxes but what works in the rest of the world didn't always work in india solutions are always very different um, in terms of uh, what's happening in our country Uh, but the problem is only growing when it comes to healthcare uh, share with us your thoughts in terms of precision technology and how it can address and resolve some of the problems we face uh, yes of course uh, india is a land of paradoxes uh, one big divide in india of course in the indian healthcare system of course as we know is the rural urban divide uh, with about two thirds of hospital beds in the urban area for one third uh, of the population that's urban but beyond that uh, in terms of human resources and healthcare is indeed extremely resource intensive uh, notwithstanding uh, the technological advances which of course are reduced to some extent but in the rural health services today the shortage of uh, specialists is to the tune of 80% now technology can only fill it up up to a point because uh, specialists in the urban areas whether they are in the private sector or in the public sector we know are overstretched also uh, second precision medicine of course uh, is 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 the thing of the future if not of the present to a certain extent uh, it's indeed what we need to aspire for and uh, technology can hopefully make it a lot more available and accessible than it is at present but that's going to be an uphill task uh, certainly uh, even in the urban areas with the national urban health mission putting in a lot of focus still even physician shortages is to the extent of 10% so human resource is something which is which is really human resource shortage is something which is really mind boggling and to what extent can technology bridge that gap uh to a certain extent yes but greater public investment is certainly necessary in the public sector in the public health services per se to make this uh, available to make this technological or the unprecedented technological advances available and as a doctor myself i would certainly pitch for that cnbc tv 18 money control new horizon 2.0 presented by ge healthcare Uh, you are creating a common uh, sort of a platform uh, as far as a data repository for instance and we saw its success with covin but how do you address and respond to some of the challenges that have been raised by professor das gupta and uh, you know the other speakers i completely agree with professor das gupta that you know there are huge challenges especially for the smaller hospitals and clinics and you know single doctor maybe doctor couple uh, clinics uh digitization is a big challenge there but i think what we are doing here is 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 something very interesting we are creating uh you know a number of digital public goods which will be used free of cost by uh, you know these smaller clinics so for example for the larger hospital chains you have what is called the hospital management information system hmis which actually you know does the entire management and and creation of digital records and and scheduling and other kinds of things similarly we are creating let's say a free application for the smaller doctors because the whole idea is that once you start digitizing this space which is so heterogeneous but in a way you digitize it and then make it patient centric in the sense that if i went to a small hospital today and i went to a another hospital after 3 days my records must be available to me 
uh, as and when I want them. And therefore, I think creating technologies and creating applications which actually are user friendly, which are doctor friendly, which are patient friendly, and which can, you know, interoperably interchange the records and creating a protocol for interchange of these records will be something which is required. But I completely agree that it is not something which can be done overnight. Uh, Dr. Uh, Hari Prasad, would you like to add to this? How do you respond and how do you react to uh, what Dr. Sharma is saying in terms of really creating a homogeneous uh, data uh, pool which is interoperable, for instance, between hospitals? Today, that is not possible or rather that is not being implemented. It's quite a headache, in fact, both for patients and doctors alike. I think we are at the right time. The COVID period actually demonstrated India's capability to respond to a challenge. I think the simple example, uh, Dr. Sharma spoke about the COVID app. It is all about public-private partnership. A huge segment of tertiary care is in the private sector. And a lot of regulations and a lot of infrastructure is available in the uh, is with the public sector. So uh, ideal public-private partnership is something which is critical and which will which has the potential to propel India into the future. Uh, Girish, uh, what are going to be the strategic pillars for you at uh, GE going forward, especially when it comes to digital innovation? So if you look at uh, GE's strategy on digital has been revolving around what we call the Edison strategy, right? So Edison is basically, as some of you might be knowing, is the core of uh, the digital's uh, backbone for GE Healthcare. What we are trying to do today is to build a platform through which you can aggregate information coming from disparate sources, right? And you're trying to provide a much more uh, I would say comprehensive and consolidated view. So our strategy in digital has been one to build a very solid foundation, the platform, what we call the Edison platform, on which the third party applications can accelerate development. And the second is to build a platform through which you can aggregate data from multiple sources and provide a longitudinal patient uh, pathway or, or, or a patient jacket in a much more uh, simpler manner. And is your platform going to be integrated with the government's uh, platform as well? The actions we are working towards, and Dr. Sharma is aware of this, we've been work, working with this organization, is to see how, see, basically, Dr. what Dr. Sharma has been putting together is the backbone of India's healthcare ecosystem, right? It is like a like yeah. a backbone. And every vendor or every hospital has to has to join that particular backbone. So we are providing, we'll be enabling that functionality where we'll be able to get onto the, on the platform in a much more seamless manner. So that's a real life example of a, really a public private partnership. And I'm sure there are very much, very many more. Uh, Dr. Chabra, what are going to be your uh, sort of key focus areas when it comes to med tech, when it comes to precision technology, both from a patient as well as a healthcare provider perspective? I think one of the greatest potentials of Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission and digitization is the ability to collect data from across the country and then have precision medicine come in where you individualize treatment for groups of people and see it is not only efficacy but also safety which comes into concern uh, when we develop this individualized treatment. Digitalization tomorrow and advanced technology will help in also overcoming the challenges that we've been talking about accessibility, affordability, availability. Okay, quickly closing comments, uh, Dr. Dasgupta. Um, clearly, the landscape is huge. Uh, and as uh, Professor uh, Dr. Sharma said, it is going to take a long time for India to really get up there with, say, the US or the Europe's of the world mm -hmm. in terms of digitization. But what do you think we need to focus on? Because uh, in, you know, in terms of the key priority areas? Well, uh, what we need to focus on is the UHC targets of 2030. Uh, on some of these, we are on track. The Niti Aayog, for example, is uh, tracking it state by state. And on some things, we are lagging. I think we should take heart from what Dr. Sharma is pointing out, that it is indeed possible to leapfrog on, on some of the dimensions uh, on which we are we are lagging in, in some senses. Uh, at the same time, uh, the other thing, the other ball on which we, we should also keep our eye, 20, where digital health is a focus area. Uh, there is a lot of uh, possibility of global cooperation and India can certainly demonstrate what it's possible uh, to, to do, uh, even despite these challenges and uh, this, this, this uh, North-South uh, collaboration that, that G20 offers can actually be a beacon for some of the South-South uh, partnerships. 
Right. Uh, that's, uh, you know, that's a great point that we can actually take this uh, to a global scale. Dr. Balal, uh, for you at the group, uh, what's going to be your key focus area? Well, I think uh, uh, public-private partnership has shown to be a great boon in the COVID era. That should certainly continue. And I think one size doesn't fit all. I think we have to tailor not only diagnostics, but also therapy. And we, I think we should look at more and more of remote monitoring, both for communicable diseases and non-communicable diseases. Uh, final word to you, Dr. Sharma. Final word in terms of data privacy. We've seen a lot of your public institutions coming under attack. Um, you know, you've got a lot of data that you want to accumulate, but also in terms of security of that data, perhaps a final word in terms of your key priorities. No, I think uh, one thing which I would like to clarify rather than, you know, priority is that the concept that the government is accumulating a lot of data is absolutely fallacious. See, what we are building is essentially we are building a highway where the data can travel from one place to another place and as and when required in a standardized form, which is fire. Uh, nowadays, the exact standard in the health space. That is what we are doing. The data it stays where it is created. So essential idea is it is not as if the government of India is going to you know, accumulate a lot of data because that will basically mean a huge amount of data security architecture which we will have to put in place. That's not correct. What is also being done is that this entire framework, the Aishman Bharat Digital Mission, which we are creating, is privacy preserving, privacy by design. How it is ensured is that the, it is a patient who basically gives the consent. So this is based on a complete consent architecture. And, and as soon as he gives consent, we have a system where we keep a we just don't keep the data, but we do keep the links, uh, which are linked to the Aishman Bharat Health account, whereby that person's data, wherever it is residing, is able to be kind of presented before him. And then he can, you know, share with somebody else. <laughs> That's one part. The priority wise, I would say that the sooner we digitize this entire space, then I think that will be the best way because the person will be able to create longitudinal health record diagnosis will become much better we will be able to utilize anonymized data for policy making we will be able to do a lot of predictive analysis and a lot of you know side effects and a lot of these dividends will flow out of the entire you know digital uh, process which will happen well that's a wrap on ge healthcare and money control present new horizons 2.0 where we've explored the length and breadth of the healthcare industry in India, right from how a medical technology or med tech can really change the landscape when it comes to diagnosis and treatment of patients in a country of our size, and of course, how to spur medical devices and manufacturing of such devices in our country to make sure that India is amongst the top markets in the world. We hope you've gained some important insights from today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. CNBC TV 18 Money Control, New Horizon 2.0, presented by GE Healthcare.